What's up guys? Welcome back or to the channel. And yes, today we're back in the garage. We've got another project and we're going to be attacking the sound system on the old yellow beast over here. However, there is one thing that I wanted to go over because I got a lot of feedback from you guys on the last video about the paint color choices. And here we are. So these are the color samples that I got. They do have a ton more available from this company that I want to get the coating, which is Monster Liner. So if you guys go online, you can check out their website, see what colors they have, and you can let me know what color you think I should paint it. But unfortunately, all the orange and the yellows have lead in them. And it says here that it basically, certain yellows and oranges contain lead pigment, which provides excellent coverage and opacity compared to lead free pigments, which are transparent in nature, requiring many more coats and significantly, significantly higher costs. Lead was outlawed only in house paints in 1978. For industrial automotive finishing, lead is still permitted, but is slowly being phased out as technology finds suitable replacements. Basically, they're saying it's only dangerous, like if you read the next part, it says it's only dangerous if you sand it. Uh, <laughs> health risk is dry powder, pigment becomes airborne and gets inhaled if paint chips are ingested. Uh, great. Future repair work including dry sanding and the cured coating should be avoided where wet sanding will prevent airborne release. So you can still wet sand it, you just can't dry sand it. Which is okay, I guess, but I really want to keep it yellow because it's not going to be Big Bird anymore if it's not yellow. But a lot of you guys were saying blue, and to be honest, this blue is my favorite out of all the blues they have. Well, there goes my light again. I told you guys I've been having trouble with that light. I've got to get a new one. But this blue looks great. It is a lot lighter than, like, it looks almost like a baby blue here, but it is more of a patriot blue. I don't know why my light's giving me so much trouble. Sorry, guys. And I would love to do it in blue, but then it won't be Big Bird anymore. So I don't know. I'm not opposed to doing a different color. However, we'll see. But what I do think we might do is paint the interior in a different color. So not only are we gonna be painting the floors in a different color, we're gonna be doing the entire interior. So up here, I'm gonna remove all the carpets. They're not coming back. I'm gonna be doing up here, the floors, the floors down there. And I think we're gonna be removing the seat because I do have another solution for the rear end over here for a better storage solution and a more secure solution. And I think we'll be able to run without the hard top a lot more now because we pr pretty much haven't because it's not secure and I have a lot of stuff back here, but I have a solution. Just wait, just wait, trust the process. <laughs> but I think the blue would look great in here. The only thing is I have the green seat belts and I don't want it to look like a clown car. And we did the green seat belts because we have the green underglow. So it was, used, it was originally yellow and green. That was my colors. So I looked at the green as well. And the green would look pretty good in here as well. Like if we did a green interior and a yellow exterior. That way on the interior, we don't have it covered in lead at least. And it's not going to be like we're rubbing our feet and all the equipment in here that's scratching everything up isn't going to be making lead powder <laughs> so i'm thinking maybe a different color for the interior i also got the purple because i figured it'd be nice to have a nice dark color so that it wouldn't be too much on dirt and you wouldn't see the dirt as much so i'm kind of thinking the purple would be nice but i don't know for sure either the purple i also got a green and a darker green both of the greens would look great even the dark green would look good i think in here on the floors like personally I think this green would look really nice it looks a lot lighter on camera but this is more of like a tennis not even a tennis ball green this is more like a grass if you think of like a nice lush lawn this is what that looks like and this is more of your traditional lime green which is closer to what the seat belts are so when you look at the seat belts, this is the closest to that. So I think that would look the best in here as compared to the other green, which is this one. You can see now the contrast difference. It is a lot more like a grass green rather than this one. So personally, I think I like the top one. Maybe we do that so that we're not covering the interior in lead, but let me know. I want your feedback. Go on the website, check out their colors. Let me know what colors you guys like. And let me know which color for interior and which color for exterior. Because a lot of people are saying a color, but I don't know if you guys are 
for talking about doing the interior or the exterior. So let me know. But let's move on to the sound system. And what we have to do for that is remove all of this. So I'm gonna evacuate the trunk and all the stuff on the back seat and we'll get to the amps which are underneath the back seat. Well, it doesn't look like much until you actually get it all out. Bam. <laughs> all right, now that we have the trunk evacuated, it is going to be a lot easier to get to everything. And we have amps under here. Now, this sound system was not installed by me. This, is, this was with the Jeep when I got the Jeep. And it does have a capacitor. This amp is for my regular speakers. So these guys, I believe, are Alpines. And stupid, I don't know who did this, but they went through everything. But I don't think they changed these. I'm pretty sure that these are still actually no these ones are changed yeah i can see them in there okay so never mind they did them all all right but i don't know what the hell kind of speakers they used there's no bass like it's done like you can <laughs> turn it up all the way they don't rattle there's just no bass so i think that those are made to be tweeters you guys can inform me if you know better but i'm pretty sure those are made to just be without bass because then there's this guy which is a mono powered amplifier and this runs my subs and i say subs because i bridge them and i run two subs off of this now like i said when i got this this came with the jeep but the subs didn't so what i had to end up doing for that was i ended up getting these guys which i'll show you in a second because you can barely see over there but i ended up getting two subs oh let me see okay so i ended up getting two subs they're mtx and i got these for free but i had them in a band pass in like a bigger box and the band pass was messed up i tried sealing it and whatever and it ended up not working out for me so i bought this box off of ebay or amazon and it's actually pretty good because it's only 12 inches tall and i believe that this is 12 inches right here i have to double check but i believe that's 12 inches so this fits in here perfect and we're running two subs i checked out what kind of uh, resistance this guy has, matched it up, and those subs work. So we were in luck. And now I want to plug it all back together because if you remember, I had them in here at one point, but the reason I took them out is they weren't working properly. So there's a remote wire, and I think, yeah, so I did it ghetto. So there's a remote wire here. This remote wire, if you don't know what that is, it's the signal that tells the amp to turn on when there's power to the radio. This one, I tapped, yeah, I know. I tapped the remote wire and I ran it to a switch, which is <laughs> over here. So there's my switch. So I tapped that remote wire, ran it to this switch, and I thought that would work. And it kind of did and it kind of didn't, but I wouldn't be getting good connection on this amp and my subs wouldn't be turning on. So let's see if we can figure it out. If we can get the remote wire to work properly, we're gonna have to rewire that. But I think we can get this to work. And if we can, I might be removing the seat today and we might mount these to the back of the box. We'll see how that works out. So first things first, let's see if we can get them working. Okay, so I figured out why I did it all ghetto. Uh, this blue wire, I never touched. This blue wire was originally the remote wire that went over there. Cause you can see here it is and here it is. And I just split it. So. Let's put it back together and see if that does the trick and just remove my switch because I wanted to have the ability to to play with it, to be able to not have the subs when I don't want them and to have them when I do want them. But apparently that's not gonna work out. So, uh, yeah, let's just snip this and let's put the blue wire back to itself and see how that works out for us. Okay, so no more switch. Now we just gotta strip the ends on these guys and connect these back together and see how that works out for us. And then if it works, then I can always extend it or whatever when I re remove the sub and put these on the back. So let's go and connect the wires. And I like using these solder connectors. So it is a butt connector, but instead of a crimp, it's just got a piece of solder in the middle there and it melts and heat shrinks everything all at once. So all you really got to do 
is get your cables connected, slip it over, heat it up, and you're done. Which is a lot easier than the way I used to do it with solder and heat shrink tubing. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think I didn't strip enough, so we'll just take off a little bit more so we can get a good connection in there. Now I know I could have done a temporary connection and just left it, but I'd rather connect it like this and waste the connector and not have any shorts or anything like that, so it doesn't touch anywhere and it doesn't short out. Now I was going a bit quick because I wanted to get it done and the t connector got a little bit toasty, but you can see the solder melted in there real nice and now we have a connection. So. Let's see if that does the trick. I've got some uh, battery cable, uh, battery cable. I've got some speaker wire and we're gonna throw this sub back in here and hopefully she fires up. Let's see. I'm gonna leave the back like this for now and I'm gonna run one speaker cable. I have one running to the sub over there and I left it just beside me here so that it's nice and easy to access and see if it's actually working. So yeah, let's turn it on and uh, let's see what we get. Okay. Let's see what happens here. And of course there's an ad. All right. Now. Mm, nothing yet. Do we need to go through some settings though? Subwoofer. Doesn't make a difference. Bass, bass is already cranked. Huh. Okay. See what I mean? It doesn't always work. There, see? Okay, so it does come on. to definitely set the gain good how are you all the neighbors love the yellow Jeep <laughs> but uh, let me go back there and see if I can set the gain and get this thing sounding right because or actually what are we doing here sub okay let's go sub zero and let's go base three instead of seven see what that sounds like loud on oh that's a lot better i might not have to play with the gain too much actually because i think i can still no i can't i can't go negative because on the other ones you you can you can go negative but i can just turn the bass off if i need to and then, yeah, so you want the bass at like three, and yeah, it definitely bumps. All right, sweet. So it does work, haha. <laughs> Um, how can we make this work? How can we make this work so that I can use this tomorrow? Because it's going to take up my entire seat. Unless I take the seat out. Alright, enough of this. So it works. Now let's see. We turn everything off. Because that's the issue. Is it doesn't always work, right? So let's see what happens. Turn it back on. Get the song going. Okay. Yeah, I see no sub. 
Oh, I can't even see. Yeah, the light is on. So the light is on on the amp. So the amp is, should be giving power. But, dude. Okay, before, this, I know this sounds kind of stupid, but before, if I put the volume loud enough, it would like shock this thing to turn on. I don't know if that makes sense. But let's see. Let's go sub plus 15. And let's see if we can get her to turn on. Yeah, there she is. So let's go turn it back down. So that's all it is. You just gotta kinda shock it, whatever that means. I don't know. Look, I'm no expert here. I don't know how they built this system, but it was all free. The system was free. The subs were free. I originally paid two grand for Big Bird, so I think we're doing okay. <laughs> all right, let's see. Let me try to figure out how I can mount this. Cause uh, yeah, we gotta figure this one out and uh, we'll be able to ride around with some good tunes. I ripped the seat out, but I don't think it's gonna stay out right now for the reason of when I go to recoat the floor or recoat or when I go to coat the floors, we're gonna rip all this out and we're also gonna rip out these. This one's already taken out because the bolts have broken over time. But this one is mounted and this one is mounted. Now, if I mount these three items onto the back of that box right there, the problem is I'm going to have to take out the entire box with the amps. And then I'm going to have live wires and all kinds of crap, which I'm going to have to go disconnect from the battery, which isn't a big deal. But the big deal is <laughs> that I didn't wire this. I'm not the one who figured this out in the first place. So yeah, I can take a picture, but those are all green wires. Those are all green wires. These are like, I'm not trying to rewire this and mess this up. Like, look at this. There's power cables galore. Like you got power cable, power cable, power cable, power cable, power cable, more over here. Like I'm just, I'm not trying to rewire anything right now. To be honest with you, I think we're going to leave it because once we rip up the floors, if you remember one of these cables, the one that goes on this side, goes down the floor and snakes that way. And then there's another one for power on this side. You can see it right there. It snakes that way. So that's these two cables, or not these two exactly, but they're cables like that. I don't know where the hell they even come out. Oh, they do come out right there. They come out right in here and they go down this way. I can feel it. Okay, so that's basically what that is. So I'll be able to move the amps and put them on the seat. Because if you remember, we didn't take the seats out when we did the floors for the fact that when we take those out, we're not gonna be able to get to the bolts because the bolt isn't right through the floor. There's another piece there in between and there's a welded nut. And uh, trust me, we're gonna be there all day. It's gonna be a weekend just to do that. So we're not gonna remove the, the, the seats. We're just gonna tape it up and do under the seats. But I don't think that's going to be an issue because if you remember, if you have a TJ down here, there's this little lever, this guy right here. And if you pull this little guy right here, what ends up happening is you can flip your whole seat forward, which takes two hands, but I'll do it for you right now. There. So once you get it going, it flips your whole seat forward and you can still like slide the seat on the slider but what you're doing here is okay is that whole mechanism so you can see how it like yeah so we'll be able to get all the way under the seat from both sides you can see we can get all the way up to there from the back and we can get all the way in here from the front so that's not going to be an issue we'll be able to coat the seats i mean coat the floors around the seats and I think we'll be able to put the amps on the seats and tape everything up. So for that simple fact, I'm not gonna give myself extra work by having to rewire all of this crap or remember how to wire all of this. And I'm just gonna leave it and we're gonna put the seat back for today. And I measured it and I know crazy enough, I think that the sub will fit between there and here and I'm just gonna strap it in with a couple of ratchet straps. Because if I put on the seat, it takes up the whole seat. So I'm gonna see if I can ratchet strap it in there somehow. If not, then no. But uh, that's my crazy idea for tonight. So let's see if we can execute it. And honestly, 
uh, it's not that I'm bad at electrical. To be honest, I think I'm pretty good. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I'm the best at electrical, but some people hate electrical. And to be honest, I don't mind it. I'm gonna wire more rock lights. I'm gonna wire a whole bunch of stuff on this thing. And I've already wired a whole bunch of stuff on this thing. But the problem is I don't like attacking other people's wiring. Like this, <laughs> who knows what the heck happened here before? Who knows where it's routed? Who knows? I, like, I, don't, I just don't want to rewire it. I don't want to play with it. I don't want to take it apart and it doesn't go back together because then I'm rewiring the whole system. And if I'm doing wiring, I really don't mind doing it as long as I'm doing it from the beginning because then I know what's happening there and I know everything. But if I'm touching other people's stuff, then uh, that's when it gets interesting. So yeah. Personally, I don't really want to mess with it, but uh, it's not like it's that hard. As long as you know where the positive and the negatives go and you fuse things, relay things, and you don't have any shorts, it's not that hard. You just got to kind of do your math and it's not, it's not terrible. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we're going to try to avoid touching anybody else's rat's nest for tonight. Got everything put away and for the simple reason that I don't want to mess with it, we're going to leave it like this for now. Now, it didn't want to fit in there because it just didn't want to sit properly and whatever. So I strapped right in here like a baby seat and I think we should be good because it's not going anywhere. And it sounds great too because now we have both sides wired up. So both speakers. So let's close it up back here and let's go to the front and I'll turn the radio on for you guys. Unfortunately, I can't play any copywritten music so I can't play anything good but I was listening to it a second ago and boy, it's reminding me of when I used to have two, uh, two 12s back in the day and I was running 4,000 watts in my Civic and it got to the point where if it was raining, the windshield wipers would skip and you wouldn't actually be able to use them. So you'd have to turn the radio down and <laughs> I miss those days. So uh, maybe we're gonna replace this old boy with some two 12s and a 4,000 watt amp or whatever else we can find because uh, we might have the space back here soon once we get rid of the seat. So for now, let's test this out. Let's see how this guy sounds and let's call that a day because I think if we can get this done, then tomorrow when we go off-roading, it's going to be that much better and it's going to be that much more enjoyable. Like I said, I wish I could play you guys some real tunes, but we're going to have to do with what we've got. And another commercial. So it's the same thing where you still gotta like bump it and get it to start up. So usually I do that by just cranking the subwoofer up and waiting for the bass to drop. There it is. And then we go back down with the subwoofer to around three. And there it is. I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but it actually sounds pretty good. Like it, it is shaking stuff in here and it is doing a pretty good job. And if you turn up the sub, wait for it to go back to volume. bad but with a subwoofer or with any sound system that you're adding in you're gonna want to have it line up properly and you're gonna want to make sure that all the speakers are positioned properly so with this this is not positioned properly at all what would be the perfect and ideal situation is if it was facing behind us right in the center because you never want your subwoofers facing you when you face your subwoofers towards you you don't get the full proper crisp sound like it sounds weird right but you want it to reverb off something you want it to bounce off something and come back and get you that's when you get the proper deep thumping bass that rattles your chest and that's personally what i found there is ways that you can do it both ways i've seen guys that have speaker walls and the speaker is facing you and it still bumps and that's great when you have a lot of power but if you don't have a lot of power like this is i don't know if this is a thousand watts or less but 
it's better when it reverbs it really is so this sounds pretty good i'm not gonna kill my battery because i still need to drive this thing tomorrow <laughs> but it sounds pretty good both of the speakers are working i'm pretty sure actually let's double check that because i did not check that so let's see huh okay well then, good thing I checked. So let me troubleshoot that for a second. All right, maybe we don't need 212s because this actually sounds really good. And it actually bumps pretty good. So I got them both working. All I had to do was fix the wire. The wire on the bottom got pulled out a little bit as I was strapping it. And now we're good. And we can control our subwoofer level. And it sounds clean. Very clean. I actually, I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with it and this is going to be a great addition to the Jeep. Super stoked that we got this figured out and now we have a sound system again. So now these speakers that are super light and tinny actually sound great because they are evened out with the proper bass. And yeah, like... Sounds great in here. Yeah, super happy. But now let's stop wasting our battery. We have it good, ready to go for tomorrow. And I think we solved our issue. And like I say, figured out, even though we don't know why you still need to kind of shock it on, it is what it is. At this point, it works and I'm happy and I'm not gonna be asking too many questions. But today's gonna be a quick one. So I think that's gonna pretty much wrap it up. The important thing that I wanna get out of this video today is you guys to let me know what color we should be painting the Jeep. If I should be going with yellow again because it won't be Big Bird if it's not yellow. But if I go with another color, let me know what color. Jump on the Monster Liner website. I will put their, their website in the description and let me know. I'm not sponsored by them. They're not paying me anything. I'm paying full price for the product, but I wanna know which one will be the best for the Jeep, which will look the best, which will bring in the most attention, like what's gonna look the best. And like, I really love the yellow and the black, but we can do something different. It won't be Big Bird anymore, but it'll still have the same soul, <laughs> kind of, even though we've changed everything, including the engine and the transfer case and the floors and yeah, not much left on this Jeep that's original still to the Jeep, but that's besides the point. So I think that's gonna wrap it up. We got the sound system done. I need you guys to let me know what color we should do for the interior and for the exterior. And tomorrow we're gonna go send it some more and we're gonna be meeting up with Mike with the CRV and uh, yeah, so definitely stay tuned for that one. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sticking around. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next one. Please jump down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, give this video a share and don't forget to leave a comment. But hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. And until then guys, ride safe out there. Peace.